we're sitting here early August, um, and, and just within the past couple of days, last Friday, the uh, a, a proposed settlement agreement was filed in the Northern District of California in the House fee um, NCAA case that, that speaks to revenue sharing that's going to come down the pike here within probably the next 12 to 14 months, depending on um, if everything goes goes through. Uh, what what can you tell us about that lawsuit, that settlement agreement, and how it how it may impact us here at K-State? You know, Curry, that's a great question. And, and, and I think, unfortunately, there's probably more questions out there than we have answers to right now. Um, and we're trying to learn as much as we can. We have probably weekly calls with the Big 12, both from an AD's only call with, with commissioner and then our legal counsel from the Big 12. Uh, we've had a couple of calls with presidents and chancellors. Um, you know, on, on the basic, you know, lawsuit, there's a back pay of $2.8 billion that are going to athletes from 2016 and, and up until today. And then there's this revenue share of 22% or up to 22%, uh, which equates to about $21.5 million per school that they could revenue share up to. And then, and then they've adjusted scholarship limits uh, in terms of where we can and in those within those limits we can give up to that full amount of of, of limit for instance f football is set right now or at least going to be set at 105 105 football players you could give up to 105 scholarships right now we give 85 um, how does that affect gender equity in the women's sports etc so you know there's still a lot of stuff going on and, and just trying to figure out institutionally how we're going to approach it and how what's the best way to do that uh, we've got a lot of conversations upcoming with our coaches We have more conversations coming up with the Big 12 and the legal team just to get our hands around what is the flexibility we have? Is this going to be some conference driven decisions? Um, you know, because conference wide, we can make a, a without being colluding, colluding, I guess is the word they use. And so we could say the conferences can say, no, we're only going to give this many scholarships. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that are still unknown that we just have to continue to work through, but we have to get answers pretty soon. Absolutely. You know, you get basketball recruiting that starts in November, um, signing days in November with some of our sports, you know, football's going to open up in December. We have to have these answers and it's, it's coming at us fast and furious. Absolutely. I don't, I don't envy you or anybody in your, <laughs> in, in your position. So I know a lot of decisions to be made and there's still a lot, like you said, a lot of information that we don't know. So assuming that this that this settlement agreement is is approved by the court and that it that it takes effect, when will revenue sharing and some of these other changes, when will that all take effect? My, my understanding is that it's uh, September of 2025. Um, and then again, how are we going to share the revenue is still up for discussion and debate in some cases, whether we're going to share it equitably amongst both men and women um, in terms of 50, 50 revenue share, or are we going to give the majority of the revenue share to the sports that generate the revenue, which is football and basketball that the back pay is that's how it's going to be done. It's going to be, I think 75% to football and 15 to men's basketball. And then the rest of women's basketball and, and the other sports. And so if, you know, if that's the case, then, okay, we need to figure that out. But uh, some of those decisions are, may not be ours. They may be court decisions. They may be the folks in Washington, D.C. from the OCR standpoint. So again, those are some unknowns, but we got to try to plan for both and figure out um, you know, which direction we would go. Absolutely. So now you talked about the number in year one being around $21.5 million. And then, so that is the rev revenue sharing number. And then is it accurate to say that you back Alston payments out of that? And then in scholarship payments, additional scholarships as well before you get to that actual revenue share. Yeah, you figure. can. That's an option that they've given the settlement. Apparently, is we're currently giving Alston money to athletes. So if we were to give more, you can give up to two and a half million. That would count towards your towards your revenue share. So got it. And then you can end up to two and a half million in scholarships. So if we gave an additional two and a half million in scholarships, then that number would be around eighteen million. And so you just kind of keep you know taking that back but again all of that is is kind of a collection of, of, of dis decisions that we have to make well if we do this how does it affect this do the coaches want more revenue share money and not as many scholarships and so that's why we've got to get some answers and some and guidance really from our conference folks and our attorneys so then we can sit down with coaches and say okay if we do this 
how, which direction you want to go, or we can do this. So there's still a lot of stuff we have to get figured out. Absolutely. Uh, another, uh, another decision that has to be made, I think is, is what, what level do we revenue share? And mm-hmm. at this yeah. point, would you say that, would you say that K-State plans to revenue share at the maximum amount? You know, that's certainly our plan. And, and again, how do we get there is going to be, you know, is it's going to be a combination of, you know, dollars that we generate from our, you know, from within the department. Maybe there might be some conference additional dollars coming in. I know that, you know, our commissioner is looking at some options to increase our revenue distribution from the conference. And then, you know, going to our donors and, and, and sitting down with donors and telling them the story that uh, this is kind of our new capital campaign uh, over the next uh, several years. And, and would they be willing to help us? And and so there's a lot of discussions we have to have. And so our goal is to try to get there and whether we get there all at once or over time. But, you know, our coaches are looking at us to say, guys, we, we you know, if we don't, it's going to be a recruiting disadvantage. Absolutely. And, but there's a lot of schools that, to be honest with you, in my conversations with ADs, that they're not sure they're going to go right to the full amount. You know, they may take, you know, baby steps and get there over time. But um, so it's just really... It's not a clear cut answer for anybody uh, right now. And it's a big number. It's, you know, we used to worry about all the awesome money. Oh, my goodness. How are we going to pay for that? Oh, we're going to feed them. Oh, how are we going to pay for that? Well, we figured it out. Well, $21 million is a different number. It's a, it's a game changer. Absolutely. It's a little, little different than the two or $3 million right, Austin yeah. figure, and right? And, you know, that's still a lot of money it if is. you think about it. But we've been able to find those dollars and 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 make those changes. And this one is is very uh, con- concerning. Is maybe not the right word, but it's it's definitely a, a, it's changing this industry a great deal. The task is is much greater than going yeah. and finding and two or three million dollars. And it's not just a K State issue. It is Ohio State, Texas, you name it. They're all sitting there. My AD colleagues are sitting there going. This is not going to be easy to to Absolutely. make happen. 